Hello traders, Gary Wagner here. This is a special early edition of the weekend report. It is 6 o'clock here in Honolulu, 12 noon in New York, first day of June on Friday, and this is the daily report for gold and silver. Phenomenal, phenomenal move to the upside, major breakout to the upside today in gold and in silver. We have both of them trading up about 3.5%. As you can see, current print on the board, 1614, putting gold up about $53 on the day. Low of 1543.60, the high is 1619.20. Silver up 94 cents right now, currently at 28.75, low 27.13, and the high 28.81. A disappointing jobs report set all of these wheels in motion as we saw a major round of rallying in the precious metals due to three factors, I believe. First, short covering in a panic mode. Secondly, safe haven buying is returning to the gold market. And then lastly, that buying the dip mentality has entered finally and pushed gold well above $1,600 per ounce. Traders, we have a lot, a lot of ground to cover on today's show, so let's get right to it. First, we're going to talk about gold. My daily subscribers, we were fortunate enough to enter on the long side. As you recall, midweek, we got in roughly at 1564. As you can see, currently trading at 1615. We are going to begin this show looking at a very, very short-term chart in terms of the actual candle size, 722 candles per day, standard candlestick format. On today's show, in regards to gold, we'll not only talk about the entry of this trade, but some of the targets that I have that I believe are quite achievable to pull profits and where I think this market might be headed. We'll do that all on the show. First thing, we talked about, and we've been covering this to death, but the possibility, as we talked about, of having this triple bottom. And I'm going to draw it as straight as I can. It should be a straight horizontal line. Of course, when this market went and hit these record tops right in here, as it came down, it formed this low. And when you think about where this low is in relationship to this high, it's a $400 drop. But as you know, it came to a perfect Fibonacci number. Second time, as the market hit this low, it came back up, this First set of highs right here in cash was around 1802. From there, it made another low. But as you can see, this low is fairly equal to this first low that we had. The next time the market really moved up, though, it hit a double wall. We had a double top here. Can be no doubt about it. And then we went into this long extension of this correction that we're currently witnessing. We'll, we might have time to talk about the wave count, but most importantly, what we pointed out was that technically, the fact that it has held this support level on this being the third time, it gave us some confidence that in fact, we might have seen a bottom. And it's hard to predict when you see the market fall from 1800 down below 1600. As you can see, we're well above that target now. We broke through 1600 very, very quickly, currently trading up well over $50 on the day. And as I said, 1615. Now, the next chart I want to take a look at is going to be our weekly chart. This is of spot gold, forex gold. And the interesting thing that I'm noticing is that there can be no doubt we followed this and our first basic assumption was that we were looking at some sort of a pennant or flag formation, a basically a corrective triangle that should have a series of legs and then break to the upside. Well, we absolutely identified the compression, the triangle, but we were incorrect. No doubt about it because it didn't. It broke to the downside. My point of that is, as you can see right now, when we take a look at where this market is, let me go ahead and blow that up. You can see, and the weekly chart is going to catch up, but you can see that we're trading just at that long-term support line, any kind of follow-through at the beginning of next week, and we will go back into 
this channel line here and to me that's absolutely and critically important when we look at the marketplaces daily chart june gold just to give you an idea of the kind of move that we saw it is a tremendous tremendous move on this daily you can see there are different levels that i was looking at for particular resistance points now in terms of an absolute target of where i think that this market could go we have a couple of areas but the first area that i truly truly want to take a look at that i think that we if we encounter some resistance and if the market continues to uh, move straight up you're looking at somewhere around 1660 right in that area if we draw this uh, straight line from this top here you'll notice that that is where we're at it's lining up we'll have to see if it can close above it or if this will be some interim resistance my sentiment is right now with everything that's going on and the incredible downside action we saw in the gold market there is really some safe haven buying returning to the market and if in fact that happens we will look for the gold market to absolutely continue higher now we have simply converted our candlestick chart into a hink and ashi chart and as you can see it it's always going to lag behind and so when we're looking at the kinds of moves that we're witnessing right now this current candle as you can see because it pegs the open as a midpoint of the prior day on a daily chart and the same with the close you notice that even though the market is trading up near the highs it isn't reflected in this Henkin chart itself but that's not the same case when we look at the shorter term cycles traders we are looking at a 240 minute Henkinashi chart again this is comex gold a continuous contract currently printing off the most active june contract and what you can see here when we look at that is this major breakout that we're having. If you look at the size of the candle, the absence of the wick here, and the fact that we have just blown past $1,600 very, very easily. As I said, in terms of different resistant levels that we can hope to see or, or track and kind of get a handle on everything, these are some of the shorter term targets that we're going to look at. And they're simply based not on Fibonacci in this case, but historical data points in which we either found support or resistance, and we simply carry that line over. One of the easiest ways to take a look at it is we will simply enter a uh, parallel line or horizontal line, and we will simply look to fix it upon these different lows and highs in the market that could be potential areas that we might, in fact, see some resistance if the market continues to move higher. And as I said, this is more short-term resistance levels. They are really going to come in a little bit before 1620 and then between 16 call it 1635 in that area these are the three targets on our daily report we'll start charting those out as more profits roll into the trade you know one of the interesting things that we brought up and we talked about was the fact that to take advantage of the current crisis in Europe in terms of having a strategic trade that integrates the weak euro dollar i had talked about two separate strategies one for those that are able to trade gold as a currency spread in the forex and we're looking at the gold market as it's traded against the euro dollar you can see that it's just hit 1300 euros per ounce of gold the other thing that we talked about and my daily subscribers are well aware of it because it's something that i found fascinating as we saw in the US dollar gold chart we saw that it actually broke through that real long-term support line on the euro it never did it maintained itself above that and even more interesting than that is we did a very very interesting calculation I believe this was on Thursday yesterday or Wednesday of this week and what we did is when we when you look at the record top in the euro to the lowest point to the lows the actual move that it made in terms of uh, dollar amounts 
was that the difference between this high here and this low right in here was 150 euros. That's how much the market retraced. When we looked at that same scaling chart in dollars, we had about a $400 drop. So any way you want to look at it, there is no doubt, but the euro gold spread didn't correct nearly as much because that strength in the dollar really held it back. So traders who took advantage of that are either taking on this strategy, and the secondary strategy that we talked about was for those in the United States that can't trade the Forex gold, we would do it with simply a currency contract of euro dollars, and we would spread that against a regular gold contract. And we did the calculation to show that for every three contracts that you're short of a euro dollar, you need to be long two contracts of gold. And that equated to the same strategy as putting this spread on. Traders, as I said, a simply phenomenal, phenomenal move in the gold market. Now silver, silver wasn't going to be left behind of this major rally. As I said, we're trading up almost a dollar on the highs, currently up about 85 cents. But as I said, both gold and silver are trading up well over 3% on the day. This is a chart we spoke about throughout the week because the major observation that I had, and it's just straight textbook technical 101, and that is the definition of a downtrend can be mathematically described very easily by looking at a high as it comes down, then the low, and then we start our count. This next high was lower than this high. And as you can see, when the market came down, we had a lower low, and of course, a lower high, a lower low, lower high, and so on. Now, this was the last lower low that we had. We didn't know it quite then, and also the triple bottom that we pointed out, but we saw a basic shift in the marketplace when we got a first high and then that next low was a higher low. However, what we did not get was a higher high. We got an equal high or what is called tower tops in candlestick terminology. That's the pattern where you have two towers and these are the tops. Resistance here. But we did get a higher low as it came down. And now the question is, obviously, are we going to get a higher high? We're right at that point now. Traders, I certainly think we have that ability. In terms of target areas, beginning of next week, we're going to look at the price points for these higher highs because these are going to be areas that if the market continues higher and if the market finds resistance, that's where it's going to find it. The major top that we're having, unlike gold, is this top right now. Is it going to be a triple top, or will we see a breakout to the upside? My personal sentiment is, with the fundamentals at play, gold is absolutely going to start rallying hard. Silver will follow suit, but there is an industrial component to silver that is not in gold, so we might see these two metals act just a little bit differently. Now, what are our basic targets? In terms of straight targets, the easiest way to look at it is by creating our Fibonacci retracement sequence. Now, traders, when I create this, I'm simply looking, this is the low back at the end of December last year. This, of course, is that secondary top. The first top before that was almost $50. When we chart that, this being zero and the low being 100, then we have a series of retracement points. Now, it's quite clear, this 76 retracement area, this is where we saw that double top, 2884. That's our first real target, and that's the area we've got to see if it can break above. After that, in terms of major resistance, really nothing's going to come in play. It's going to be almost a straight shot from about $29 to about 30 and a half. That's base, you can see some activity here before it breaks out and then moves above. Now, we'll talk about 33 and above later. We first have to cross two thresholds before that discussion is relevant 
by any means, shape, or form. But I will tell you this, this kind of an explosive move in the marketplace is what we talked about over the last week, the possibility of a real key reversal in the marketplace, in the precious metals. Because what we witness more than anything else is a return to the gold safe haven paradigm. Rather than money flowing into gold, it's been flowing into the dollar. Now, interestingly enough, there were many out there that predicted gold would continue to fall because we are having a global meltdown in our equities markets and traders who are strapped for cash will liquidate things like gold to cover the losses in the equities market. And traders, for our last chart of today's show, we will look at this gold chart it is a two hour chart in straight candlestick format and as we go into the one o'clock time zone in new york it's almost seven o'clock here we can see that there's a little bit of what i call backfilling in silver right now although when we consider where it is at this backfill is coming very very near to these tops this double top that we talked about but a little bit of backfilling before it moves back up is nothing unusual. These are two-hour candlesticks. And really, you can see the kind of pivotal move we made in this four-hour time period right after the release of the jobs report. You know, traders, it's been an exciting week. We talked about this type of activity coming into play. I'm glad we're able to participate in these kinds of moves in the market. This has been Gary Wagner, wishing you, as always, good trading. We will talk to you on Monday for another daily update and report. Bye-bye.